Sprinters, let's do the deal review. By now you know that we need two different formats in a week. You can do them wherever you want, on the beach, like right now, in your office, outside your office, whatever is conducive to an atmosphere of good work. And now the two formats are, you need the pipeline review and the deal review. In the last video, we have talked about the pipe line review. This is where you look at the whole pipeline, which opportunities did, did each of one create, what's the probability, what's the volume, what's the agreed next step. Now, in that pipeline review, you will see, oh my God, this is a 300K opportunity and it's happening on Thursday. I need a deal review. Could you guys help me close this deal? Let's pull up the deal review template and let's help me see exactly what I am missing, what my sales gaps are, so that I can close this big deal. And so what we do then with Teams is, all right, let's get the deal review template out. Let's see where you are and let's help you close this big deal. And one thing that we like to share are the, the rules. So there are some rules that are helpful to know because, you know, we have studied so many hundreds of teams and we are also always researching the newest numbers. So there is, there is some evidence of typical problems and things to avoid. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can use those processes immediately. So let's look at the rules and let's look at the deal review. Opportunity is 500K. You are scheduled on Thursday to meet the team for the first time. So we go to the beginning of the deal review. So what's the deal review? Somebody has an opportunity coming up. They want this big deal to happen and we help them. We come together, we help them. And, and let's see where you are. Did you have your call already? Did you qualify them already? Yes, I did. All right. So they are a good fit for you. You have qualified them already. Then let's move on. How are you preparing for that meeting? Mm, I need to find out how their personality. I need to find out how, which, which um, style of communication they need more. So let's find out which words they use which words they don't use so how did you prepare so far i went on i went to linkedin read their last three posts now i know if they are more this type or that type according to disk or according to other models that you like to use so now you know if you need to talk quick and results oriented or slow and in inclusivity oriented what kind of person uh, is sitting on the other side and What's their style of communicating and of deciding and of processing information? This is really important because otherwise you lose them already here, right? If they are a fast paced decision uh, oriented person and you come with let's explore all perspectives, you lost them already. If they are very inclusive and you push forward like Elon Musk, you lost them already. So you have to find out uh, what kind of people they are Let's help you prepare, quick check on their socials. What can we find out? And then how do you plan to visualize? This is something that made 300K indifference. Last week we were coaching somebody who was planning on visualizing the, the meeting. So they had a, a big discovery session with a potential very big client. We're talking here 600K. And they were planning to visualize on the iPad. And so the sprint coach goes, where do they sit? Is, it, is this a Zoom? No, no, it's in, in the room. And you are note taking on your iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm showing them here, look, this is what you're doing. And they're sitting across the table. Yeah, all right. You are losing 600K right now. <laughs> Sometimes it's so simple because when you're in there, you don't see it. So from his perspective, it made sense. But of course, from the outside, you see immediately it doesn't make sense to write something on an iPad 
and they don't see it. So you would immediately lose them here. If you visualize privately versus visualizing publicly, you have lost them already. You have lost 600K right there. You don't even need to fly there or walk there or take the bus or whatever you are taking to get there. Then the goals. Um, what are their goals? Um, we didn't talk about that. Okay, then don't send the offer right now. You don't send an offer before they have told you the goals. Well, they want me to present. You don't present before they don't have committed to their own success and to their own change. You can only be in their corner after they take this decision. So sales is helping them decide, is helping them buy the right thing. If they don't tell you the goals, you don't send an offer. I know you get asked all the time, you yeah, well, present, show me, show me your wisdom. No, you don't show any wisdom because there can be no wisdom without direction. You need their direction first. Then change. Are, why do they want to make this change right now? Are they really committed to this change? Do they know what is the pain of same and the pain of change? Because there are two pains in here. The pain of same if nothing changes. The pain of change because change is new behavior. That means more time on new behavior. It will be uncomfortable. Stuff will pop up. Um, and then you know now what they want and you also share with them what they need because if you are an expert you know more than they know okay so uh, for example i'm a strategy advisor since 20 years so i i see many many industries over many many countries over different maturity levels i know more about scaling a business than any single business owner because that's my job and I see multiple industries. So it's my duty to share it. If you are an expert in virtual reality and they want to use virtual reality for, to improve their marketing, you are the expert. So they will tell you maybe, okay, I need, I need uh, five goggles, uh, VR, AR goggles, because that's what I need. And you will tell them, well, that's what you want, but let me share what you really need. Because those goggles are not built for that. They are built for that. And so you can use the goggles to achieve A, but not to achieve B. So I will tell you what you actually need. What you are telling me is B. That's the expert. And if you can't say that, you're not the expert. So the reason why you are bringing value to that conversation is you know more than they do. Because you do VR every day. They do marketing every day. That's why you are the expert. And then you help them clarify the decision. So the decision that you are taking, guys, is to move from A to B. And the goggles might help you get there. Uh, and this is my recommendation. If I was you, I would do this. It's really important that you now recommend. Why? There is evidence, factual evidence. There is some data. I will not bore you with the, the source of the data. I was thinking of grabbing the source of the data. But um, the um, uh, HubSpot annual report, the Salesforce annual report, our own data and other academic research all points to a higher win rate via experts that recommend. Why? Because then you trust them. Because now they are with you in the arena. They are not talking about something. They are deciding with you. They say, oh, I get asked this all the time and I always say this. That's a recommendation. Or mm, if I was in your shoes, I would do first B and then A. Then you know that you are in the arena with them. For them, it makes it easier to buy. It makes it easier to take a decision. It also reduces the amount of possibilities because they have now the expert doing saying he would do this so now either they trust you and then you have now reduced the the number of options and are helping them decide and moving forward or they don't trust you then they will ghost you you will go back uh, how will you see it communication will get thinner and thinner later and later 
the sentences will get weaker, shorter, and then they will say, let me think about it, and you're gone. They will ghost you. This is how it typically happens. So if we get that right and we recommend something, and then we say, can we create a plan and show you the, the plan? Then you will come with the prototype up to the next meeting. And with that prototype, then you move on. Concerns. Inaction. Was this the real cost of inaction? Is it this one or this one? The risks. How can we help the buyer reduce the risk? And then what's the real investment, including the time? And then when do you want to start? And then you send a statement of work that is building on the prototype where you got already some feedback and now this is nothing new for them. This is just what they have co-created with you. Why? Because nobody fights their own change. But everybody fights, of course, the change that some other person, some salesperson wants to uh, push onto them. But nobody fights their own change. They are quick in deciding and quick in moving on if it's their own. That's why these are all, you see how many, these are all the things that we need to get right in one closing. So it's not really one closing, right? It's how many? It's like 15 closes to close one deal, actually. One complex B2B deal. And that's the deal review. The deal review is when you go all over this, let me clean it up. So when you have the deal review, you print this template out, you go over it, and then you help them, uh, you help the person who is closing the deal realize, okay, you are here now to take care of this and this and this. Wherever they are, you help them realize where they are right now and find blind spots if there are some and there are usually some even the best people have blind spots and you will find here also some simple rules that have worked very well in the experience of hundreds of teams for example you never send a proposal or a presentation you always ask them to walk them through and schedule a call where you will walk through you are the presentation okay you don't send anything for many reasons if you need more i'm happy to tell you more why but there is a lot of data and a lot of psychology behind that a lot of experience then make it easy for them to decide there are two kinds of of losses one is they are the wrong people or they are committed to not changing if they are committed to the status quo you cannot win them over the second chain the second uh, reason why they don't buy is customer indecision. That means they have committed to change. They want your solution, but there are three reasons. I made a whole video about that. There are three reasons why they don't. Lack of knowledge, I need to do more homework, means they don't trust you as an expert. That's why you have to make a proposal so that you are the expert in their perspective. Second reason uh, is um, lack of uh, I'm, I'm getting too boring here. So let, let's get quicker. You can watch the whole video. Uh, use their words, not yours. That's why you create a prototype. And then co-create the solution. Nobody fi fights their own change. Visualize the cost of inaction, not just the ROI, where can you bring them, but also the cost of inaction, because you want to clarify with them the pain of same and the pain of change. Always schedule a next session together. Never leave the meeting. You don't sell. You don't sell. You don't beg. You don't ask for money. You don't ask for anything. You help them decide and you offer to work with them. They decide. You are always one step behind. Never get too excited. If they tell you that they are here, I'm so ready then you stay always here okay if they tell you that they are here can we have a proposal you say yeah after we did the prototype together if they wherever they tell you they are you are always one step behind you don't jump forward okay this is very important otherwise you will get ghosted and then they drive the decision you drive the process 
and you make it easy for them to decide. These are some uh, timeless sales rules and this is how you can use the deal review. I hope this helps and if you want the, the three specific reason, go to the reasons for close lost. You will find them there. Keep rolling. What if your business would run well even when you are on vacation? Discover how 1,600 business owners have regained their freedom using the Strategy Sprint's blueprints. How they enjoy living their dream and watching their business scale. Get the exact checklists they use to go from stressed to fulfilled using the Strategy Sprint's method. Order your copy of Strategy Sprint's 12 Ways to Accelerate Growth for an Agile Business on Amazon today. And if you love it, leave us a review. For more information, head over to strategysprints.com.